So Nina Turner uh, is absolutely obliterating her opponents in her congressional race in Ohio. It was so glorious to see. The poll made her look like Tiger Woods or Michael Jordan or, you know, the best of the best of the best, the GOAT when it comes to this stuff. There's nothing that's more inspiring than seeing a true lefty dominate in a race because it shows you if you run a good campaign and you have the right ideas, you can overcome odds that are stacked against you. And anytime you're anti-establishment, the odds are stacked against you. But guess what? Now the establishment is panicking and they're throwing everything they got at Nina Turner. I mean, they're launching nuclear missiles right at her face. That's what they're doing. So all the big guns came out. Hillary Clinton came out. You know, a bunch of other uh, big name Democrats came out. Clyburn. And they threw their support behind the closest establishment opponent to Nina Turner. Um, the one that I'm like, I'm sitting and I'm watching and I'm like, oh, for the love of God, don't do it, is... If Obama feels like it's a close race and there's a chance that Nina Turner can be defeated, like, it, so if the other opponent shows a glimpse of life, he might come in and try to endorse the corporate Democrat. And God, would that, that would be so crushing. But Nina is on the verge of something very special right now. And obviously her being in Congress would be huge because then you actually have somebody who's not only correct on the policies, but also is a fighter. And they need fighters and they need leaders in D.C. to really have what is effectively a left-wing Tea Party that's, that can push the Overton window to the left, make real arguments, and get some real change, even though the deck is still stacked against us. Well, um, now there's an influx of cash coming into the race to try to defeat Nina Turner. Here's the new smear ad that was run against her country is more polarized than ever and nina turner is no help unified democrats turner said no support clinton over trump not nina turner help biden defeat trump turner refused instead turner said voting for biden was like eating <laughs> turner even voted no on the entire democratic platform rejecting biden's plan to build on obamacare nina turner for congress no thanks the mfi pack is responsible for the content of this advertising Let's break this down. Understand they are so desperate, and that's why they're doing this kind of gutter politics. And a lot of that, if not all of it, is completely misleading. So when they say she, you know, she was against the Democratic platform, what they don't tell you is why she was against the Democratic platform. She's not against it because she's like agreeing with Republicans. She's against it because it didn't go left enough, in her opinion. Didn't have the Green New Deal in it. Uh, it, it had effectively, quote, ironclad support for Israel. They didn't even condemn uh, the illegal settlements or the expansion of it. And there's no Medicare for all in the platform at a time where we have a pandemic and millions of people without insurance and medical bills being the top cause of bankruptcy. So that's why she was against the platform, because the platform, in her view, was very milk toast. Now, if somebody in the early 1960s said, you know what, I'm against the Democratic platform because it's, they're not pro-civil rights strongly enough, or they're not pro-civil rights at all, well, how can you blame that person? Or if, if you attacked it and said, hey, I need the Democratic platform to be against the war in Vietnam because I think it's criminal, and it wasn't, how can you attack somebody for that? They are correct, and history will prove them correct. So Nina Turner looks at the Democratic platform and says, listen, there's a lot of things in it that are good, but you need to have these things in it or I can't support it in good faith. So that's why she opposed it. If anything, that's more of a reason to support Nina Turner. Not to be against her, because she's principled and she's intelligent and it shows that she'll actually fight for these things. So that, th what they use as a strike against her is actually a really strong argument for her, that she's independent-minded, and she's going to not just go along to get along with the crowd if the crowd is dead wrong. So, I mean, that's annoying as hell. By the way, there are other things that were missing from the platform that I can't remember right now, but there, I remember reading through it at the time and saying, this platform is sort of trash. Like, there needed to be, it needed to go a lot further on a lot more issues. Um, so let's keep going here. When they made the argument, oh, Nina Turner didn't want to unify Democrats. The point that Nina makes and the point that every principled, independent minded lefty makes is that why is it people only scream about unity when it's to fall in line behind a corporate candidate? 
behind more of a right-wing Democrat who agrees with Republicans half the time. That's the point she was making. So why, were, why don't we talk about unity like right now when Nina Turner is crushing the field, where's the unity behind Nina Turner? There is no unity behind Nina Turner. Corporate Democrats and centrist Democrats and right-wing Democrats didn't go, oh, you know, I need to be for unity as a matter of principle, so let me support Nina because that's the right thing to do. She's leading by so much, it's an insurmountable lead. They didn't say that. They didn't say that. Because they invoke unity. It's a ruse. It's a scam. It's to get you to fall in line and not criticize Democrats who deserve criticism. So, I mean, Nina could flip this argument right back on him and say, wait a second, you're saying I don't want to unify Democrats. What about you? You're not unifying right now. You're doing vicious gutter attacks and smears because you want to win the race. Now, I'm sure Nina would say, you know what? It's okay if you want to make your argument, make your argument, but don't come after me when I make my argument. And by the way, my argument's even better. So I hate, like, it's just such a misleading nonsense. It's trying to appeal to tribal partisan instincts in people. That's what it's trying to do. Um, then they say something about she helped, she didn't help Biden defeat Trump. Listen, Nina Turner, and there's people who may agree with this. There's people who may disagree with this because obviously the debate about lesser evil voting comes up every time there's an election and lefties have strong opinions in, in one direction or another on this. But ultimately she voted for Joe Biden. Now, yeah, she didn't do a thousand rallies for him, but why should she? Joe Biden doesn't really reflect her values in any concrete way. Does he reflect it more than Donald Trump? Sure. But yes, that's as far as she was willing to go. Yeah, I'll vote for the guy, but I'm holding my nose as I do it because it's kind of gross because here's a guy who supported the Iraq War. Here's a guy who supported the Patriot Act and NAFTA. Here's a guy who did the bankruptcy bill and the crime bill, which locked up so many young, you know, men of color for crimes that shouldn't even really be crimes. Nonviolent drug offenses. And Joe Biden, to a large extent, was unapologetic about that. So, that, that's her criticism. He's still terrible. He's better than Trump, but he's still terrible. So, no, I'm not going to do rallies for him. Is that what you expected? You expected her to go out there and do rallies for somebody whose values are not really that much in alignment with hers, even though he's better than Trump? See, that's the thing. They're so... Not only do they want you to shut up and fall in line in a general election behind a corporate Democrat, they also want you to be excited and, like, ecstatic about supporting them and, like, acting like there are no real differences policy-wise between your values and theirs. And that's just, they want you to lie is what they want you to do. And then again, they bring up this quote, which I knew they would try to use this against um, Nina when she said that voting for Joe Biden is like eating shit. Uh, now, of course, again, they're being misleading because Nina's full quote is something to the effect of, yeah, voting for Biden or Trump, that's like giving me a bowl of shit and saying, would you rather eat the whole bowl or half the bowl? Voting for Trump is like, or seeing Trump win is like eating the whole bowl. Voting for Biden, Biden or seeing Biden win is like eating half the bowl. Is eating half a bowl of shit better than eating a full bowl of shit? Of course, but it's still a bowl of shit. So forgive me if I'm not excited about eating this. That comment is totally accurate. And you know what? There are a lot of people around the country who relate to that. Because people are disgusted with politics as usual. This is why Congress usually has an approval rating around like 20%. It's because people know they're always voting for the lesser of two evils. People know it's like, okay, who am I going to vote for? Which competing group of special interests and donors am I going to vote for? Should I vote for the ones who represent Wall Street and uh, billionaires and the military industrial complex? Or should I vote for the ones who represent Wall Street and billionaires and the military industrial complex and, you know, Silicon Valley and uh, lawyers? And it, it's just, it's a which group of people who shouldn't be running the country but are, should I vote for? Because that's what it is with our corrupt system. And again, the arguments that Nina would make are like, here's a guy in Joe Biden who voted for the Iraq war. That's an illegal war. It's a crime. It should have never happened. Um, killed hundreds of thousands of innocent civilians. Torture happened as a result of it. She has a problem with that, and she should. The Patriot Act, illegal NSA spying on everybody. Joe Biden supported that. NAFTA, outsourcing jobs. Joe Biden supported that. 
the crime bill, the bankruptcy bill, which made it so you can't even file for bankruptcy on your student loans. These are the things Nina Turner would cite and say, you know what? I have a problem with that. That's why it's like eating half a bowl of shit. Because it all comes back to policy. And she's serious about policy. Policy. She's serious about improving the lives of the American people. And when she sees a Democrat actively hurting the American people, she's against it. And she's going to call it out. And again, what more do you want? Because ultimately, she did end up voting for Biden. So she did eat half the bowl of shit because she thought it was better than eating the full bowl. But the fact that she's honest about what she did makes you turn on her. But that's the thing. They were never with her in the first place. Because... The whole point here is we need to not get any strong lefty leaders in Congress because there are people there who agree with you and me nominally, but let's face it, we've seen how they acted. They're not leaders. They don't have that leadership quality. They don't have that backbone of steel where they're willing to get hated by the media and by leadership of their own party. And Nina Turner does have those qualities. And so they're trying everything to make sure she doesn't get elected. And these are the kind of gutter attacks that they're going for. Every single thing she said there, when you look at it in context, and you actually steel man her arguments instead of straw manning her arguments, you understand the core of everything she's saying here is accurate. Because she's not a, a mindless partisan hack. Her only allegiance is to the American people and good policy that would improve lives. And the people who are attacking her are corporate goons who want to keep the status quo in place want to continue having a government that represents them, the corporations, and not the American people. That's who's attacking her. And that's why all they got is just now raw appeals to partisan tribal instincts. They're trying to leave an impression with voters in her district in Ohio that, look at the things she said, sounds like she's not even really a Democrat. Maybe she's more sympathetic to the Republicans because look at her quotes. Why would you say that about Biden eating a bullshit? Why would you say that unless you sort of agree with the Republicans? It's just, it's a lie. It's a lie, effectively. Because she says Trump is a full bowl of shit. So, you know, it's just appealing to base instincts and emotions and counting on people to not be independent-minded and thoughtful about how broken our government is and about how much Nina Turner wants to change that. So... The guys, they're throwing everything they can at her. And that poll where Nina was leading by a mile and a half, it was great, but it was an internal poll. And so we need to hope that more independent polls verify this. And we need to hope that her lead is big enough where she can withstand this onslaught of, you know, smear ads and smear attacks. And the only upside of that poll where she was up so much is that Obama's cautious, so he may look at that and be like, she's up too much, I don't want to endorse against her because if I do and Nina wins, then that tarnishes my image and my legacy. And so that might be the only upside of that poll. But what I would say to Nina is, keep at it. You know, run through the tape. If you're up 40, you got to try to be up 60. Because these people are vicious. And also Nina needs to remember, if she ends up winning, look at what they try to do to you. This is something that Bernie wasn't good at. Bernie wasn't good at getting smeared and stabbed in the back 18 ways and then, you know, using his power and the bully pulpit to outmaneuver them. Whether it's being more aggressive or whether it's playing chess and, you know, using political jujitsu on them where you win in, the, in these battles, Bernie sort of would just like fall back a little bit when he would get the unfair criticisms and the smear attacks against him. I don't want Nita to do that. I want her to take down names, take down groups, understand, you know, what a lot of these swamp creatures in D.C. are really about. I mean, listen, even the Congressional Black Caucus now endorsed against her. What does that tell you? The Congressional Black Caucus is now representing moneyed interests. They're representing the corporations and the billionaires, and they want to preserve the status quo. And so that's why they were against Nina. And so Nina wants to shake stuff up. Nina is a real change agent and Nina is dedicated to Medicare for all and a bunch of these issues that they are not in favor of. But this is a real important race and she's so close. We got to get her over the edge and she's got to keep fighting because God, they, they to stop even a social democratic movement, there's 
no low they won't sink to. And we're witnessing that happen right now. If you want to see me and Crystal Ball interview legends like Noam Chomsky, Cornell West, and more, subscribe to Crystal Kyle and Friends on Substack. $5 a month gets you the video version a day early. Remember, we take zero ad dollars for this podcast. Or you can sign up on Substack for free and get the audio version a day later. Link in the video description box below.